Welcome to my robotics channel, I'm Jacob. I've always been fascinated by walking hexapods and there are some really cool ones on YouTube, but I wanted to make my own from scratch. In this video, I will walk you through my entire design process covering how to get a hexapod frame, selecting the various components and creating the code and the remote controller so you can build your own one if you want. The hardware itself is not too complicated, but because there's a lot of wires and servos, I try to keep the price as low as possible. Be a bit careful, powerful servos and metal legs is a bit of a dangerous combination, so keep your fingers away when it's running. After this word of warning, let's get started. To build a robot spider, you need a frame to hold all the components together. One of the first options I considered was designing and 3D printing all the parts myself. But since I kind of want a really big and scary heavy robot, I like the idea of having it made out of metal. I don't really have tools to do metal myself, but I bought a metal frame kit that looks pretty cool some years ago, so I decided to use that. Here are all the parts supplied with the kit. So the kit has three joints in each leg, which requires 18 servers in total. So the different joints for the leg are put together like this and called a coxa for the hip movement that moves like this. There's the femur that moves the knee up and down like this. And then there's the tibia that moves the foot like this here. Since there's six legs, there's quite a lot of brackets and a pretty big bag of nuts and bowls. And there's also some, uh, some small bearings uh, that are used for the hip movement. One thing that scares me a bit, that there's absolutely no instructions on how to assemble this kit. So I hope I will be able to look at pictures from the shop uh, to figure out how to put it together. Before I start assembling, I need to get the electronic components that will fit the frame. And especially the servos are part of the structure and you cannot assemble the frame without having the servos. So I'm considering two types of servos. So the best one here is the serial servo. Uh, they are more expensive, but they have this big benefit that they have two plugs in the back and you can connect different servos together. So you have a lot less wires to deal with, uh, but they are more expensive. The other one here I have chosen is the MG996, which is a very popular servo. Each servo has its own wire. So you will have 18 wires going into the servo controller. Uh, but they have metal gears, they are dirt cheap and they are also really strong, so they are quite popular for robot builds. Uh, and since price will matter because you have 18 servos, I have chosen to use the MG996. To move all the 18 servos needed for the robot, you will need a servo controller. The servo controller will provide power to the servos and control the movements of each servo. You can get some pretty cheap servo controllers and they are really good for some purposes. But because there's so many servos in this robot, I have chosen to use a more advanced controller from a Pololo called Mini Maestro. Um, this one can drive 24 servos. Um, and the reason why I use this is that it will make programming a lot simpler later on. Uh, these servo controllers are more advanced. So they also uh, allow you to program in speed and acceleration directly into the servo controller and this will simplify the robot code a lot later on. To control a robot, you need to give it a brain. And I'm considering two options here. So I can either use a Raspberry Pi that's running Python code. So this is really good if I want to add AI or voice control and cameras and stuff like that. Uh, but it's also a bit more expensive and requires more effort to wire up. So for this build, I'm going to focus mainly on the mechanical parts and I don't need something that is as advanced. So I have chosen instead to use a simple Arduino Uno, which is really cheap and it works well and it's very easy to connect hardware to it. Since I've chosen the MG996 servo, it's important to look at its datasheet to figure out what it requires. And this servo will take somewhere between 6 and 7 volts to run normally. My battery will output around 8.4 volts, so I need to regulate the power down to 6 or 7 volts for the servos. So to regulate power, I will use something called a UBEC, uh, like this one here. Each of these servos will draw around 1 ampere under normal load or up to 1 ampere under normal load and 2 ampere uh, at stall torque. So 
because we have 18 servos, the UBAG must actually be pretty big to handle all that ampere running through it. So I have chosen to use this uh, model from a company called Yep that can handle 20 ampere, and I hope that is enough for the robot. To drive my robot spider, I also need a battery. And the battery should be able to deliver somewhere around 20 ampere of current continuously. Most normal rechargeable batteries like these, they cannot handle that much. They can do around 2 ampere. So instead, I've chosen to use a LiPo battery that is able to deliver a lot of current at once. To get enough voltage, I need a 2 cell battery that will output somewhere around 8.4 volts. So LiPo batteries have this C rating which tell how much current it can deliver. 1C means the battery can deliver all its power in one hour. So a 2200 milliampere battery of 1C can deliver somewhere around 2.2 ampere of current. But since my robot needs a lot more, I have chosen to use a 25C battery which peaks around somewhere around 55 ampere. I want to be able to remote control my robot spider. And for that, uh, I have chosen a Bluetooth module, uh, which is called HC06, like this one. In my earlier video on the robot ME6, I explained how the HC06 module works in more detail. Now that I have my 18 servos for the 6 leg, it's time to assemble the frame. The servos can rotate about 180 degrees. So before I start assembling anything, it's really important to ensure that the servos are in the center position. The easiest way to do this is with a servo tester, like this one here. But you can also do it with the servo controller. When I started assembling, I actually made the mistakes of assembling all six legs the same way. But luckily I noticed on the photos from the shop that the legs on the left side and the right side are actually different. So I had to take some of them apart again and now I will start slowly and reassemble the legs only on the left side. Here's the left leg completely assembled. It looks like this here. Uh, one thing that's fun to try is that you can try attaching the servo tester to some of the servos um, just so you can see it moves and that everything works as it should. Yeah, this looks perfect. I will try one of the other servos as well, just for fun. So this is the foot. Yep, this is awesome. After assembling all the legs, and to be very honest, I actually made a few mistakes during that, I can now attach them to the frame. So the bottom frame and the top frame are attached together with three brass spaces looking like this here. And the servo legs, uh, the servos on the legs themselves are pretty easy to attach. You just attach the servo horn to the top frame. And then in the end, you take the bottom plate and screw to the free spacers. And it has some holes that align with the different bearings on the servos. So, here's the final result. And to be honest, I'm super happy. So, the, the final robot, it weighs somewhere around 2 kilos. It looks really cool and I think it will be great when we start powering it up. Now that the frame is assembled, it's time to figure out where to place all the electronic components. One of the first things I notice is that none of the holes in the brackets really seem to align up uh, with the Arduino or anything. So I think I will design and 3D print some brackets on my own. On the various photos of the robot, you often see that they put the servo controller on top and then have all the wires coming on top of that. But since this is the part I'm likely going to disassemble the least, I think I will put it in the bottom instead. When designing 3D brackets for a robot, it's quite important to make sure that you leave room for all the various wires, that the brackets will not in any way interfere with some of the servos that will break stuff, and also that you can access the USB ports 
especially on the Arduino and the USB port on the server controller when you are going to program them. I designed the brackets I want to 3D print in Fusion 360. Since the frame itself is actually just a few different types of brackets, I thought it would be pretty cool to model the whole robot so I can see the final design. One of my favorite tools for doing that is the digital caliber that makes it really easy to get the right measurements from the physical frame. It's especially important to get the placement and the distance of the various holes correct so they will fit the components and the brackets when I put things together. Here's the final frame with everything attached. I also chose to add some joints so I can move the different parts and see what the final robot will look like. To design the mount for the Polulu, I start by creating a 2D sketch with the right measurements. I then extrude it with 4mm to get the bracket and make space for some notch I can attach screws into. The final result will look like this. The Arduino bracket is a simple square plate attached to the middle of the top frame. I will put the Bluetooth module behind it like this. So here's the final part after printing uh, with the Arduino on top and the Bluetooth in the bottom. The bracket for the battery is a simple box that can be attached under the Arduino. I have to make sure to make room for the battery wire. Here's the final part after printing. It is quite easy to make mistakes when designing parts, so in reality I actually had to do a few test prints and redo the designs to get them right. The wiring of it all is actually not too hard because most of the wires will go into the servo controller. In addition, I will need a serial connection between the Arduino and the servo controller and to connect the Bluetooth module. It's very important not to discharge the LiPo cells below 3 volts since it will be ruined and in worst case the battery can catch fire. It's quite easy to measure voltage with an Arduino up to 5 volts. So since my battery has two cells, I need to watch out that it doesn't go below 6 volts. I added a voltage divider to half the voltage from the battery so I can measure it and stop the robot when the battery is discharged too much. To make the robot walk, I need to move the legs in the right pattern. I could move the legs one at a time, which is called a wave gate, but that is quite slow. Instead, I have chosen to use a gate called a tripod gate, where three legs are always touching the ground, while the other three legs are moving above ground. The three legs that are on the ground will push the robot forward in a straight line. Rotating is pretty similar to walking, except that one of the legs on the ground push in the opposite direction. Moving the robot legs turned out to be a lot harder than I first thought. Originally my plan was to animate the legs by just finding some joint angles by trial and error and then play it back in the right order. This approach where you adjust the angles to move the legs is called forward kinematics. But this do not work so well for hexapods since we want the legs to move in a straight line when pushing the robot forward. And that requires changing all the angles of the leg at the same time during the movement. After a good bit of studying and brushing up on high school math, I determined that inverse kinematics is the way to go. With inverse kinematics, you tell the robot where you want the feet to be, and then you use math to calculate the required angles to make it happen. I will soon do a video on how to implement inverse kinematics in details. And the math is actually not so tricky, but making it work on six legs that are in different angles and position to the body complicates things quite a bit. Before I started coding the robot itself, I needed to convince myself that the inverse kinematic math was actually working. I did this in a simple Python Jupyter notebook that would draw a single leg and output the calculated angles based on a given foot position so I could validate that everything looked right. After I convinced myself that the basic math was sound, it was time to do the code in the Arduino. But with so many servos, getting the code right required a lot of planning and rework for me along the way. And here are some of the challenges I encountered. So first, the servos are actually not oriented the same way, depending on whether the leg is on the left or the right side. So it turned out that some of the servos need to have their rotation reversed. For example, I would like to always have a positive angle on the knee servo to move the leg up. Another challenge is that the servos work with pulses from about 500 to 2500 times a second and not angles. But all the math is angles, so I needed to do some conversion. Also, the robot has six legs and I don't really not want to duplicate the code six times, which means the code must be configurable for each leg. 
And the last real challenge and the hardest one was that it's so easy to make mistakes and it can be pretty hard to figure out where it went wrong. I ended up creating some test movements that would output known angles calculated by hand for verification. To simplify the code, I started to create a class to encapsulate calculations on a single servo that would work with angles between minus 90 and 90 degrees with zero in the middle. Then I created a class for a leg that holds three servos, foot, knee and hip. And the algorithm to calculate the angles for each leg servo based on the desired foot position versus center of the robot. The calculations for the leg had to take into account that legs can be either on the left side or the right side of the robot, can be mounted in different positions and at different angles to the body, so it all had to be configurable with parameters. After I got one leg working perfectly, luckily the exact same code could be used to move the other legs as well using different input parameters. Finally, I made a program for the hexapod itself that has six legs and is able to read Bluetooth commands from my remote. The hexapod program will tell each leg where it wants the foot to be, and when all angles are calculated, it will send the desired positions as pulses to the Maestro server controller. The final problem I encountered was that if I just gave the leg the start and the end position of a foot, the foot will actually not move in a straight line, but sometimes just rotate in the hip. It was actually kind of obvious, but it's because the foot and the knee angles are the same at the start and the end point, but to move the leg in a straight line, these angles must actually change continuously during the movement of the leg. I solved this by interpolating foot positions between start and end in a number of smaller steps and then calculating all the angles for each step. And now it finally works. I know this sounds really complicated, but the code is actually not too difficult. And you can see the result in my GitHub repo. There's a link in the description. And there are many more things I would like to do with the code, like making the robot move in any direction and also move up and down and with different speeds. But I wanted to start simple, so for now I have just implemented forward and backward walking and rotation left and right. After I implemented all the code and put the robot together, it would not move at all, which was super annoying. I finally traced this down to the robot not receiving Bluetooth commands, but that was strange because that was working before. The problem turned out to be that I used an Arduino Uno, but since that doesn't have any hardware serial ports, I used a library called Software Serial, which normally works pretty well. What I found though, was that because both the Bluetooth and the server controller works over a serial connection, I needed two instances of Software Serial, but the library cannot handle that. In the end, I gave up trying to make it work, and then I redesigned the robot to use an Arduino Mega instead that has several hardware serial ports, and now all was working. To control the robot, I wanted a mobile app with some joysticks. I have implemented this in Unity, and it will send simple Bluetooth commands when the buttons are pushed and the joysticks are moved. I will probably do a later video explaining how to build an app on your own, but for now you can see the code for the app in the GitHub repo. After this initial implementation, I really do not feel like I'm done. There's already many other things I would like to do to enhance the robot. Especially more advanced gate patterns, maybe adding switches to the feet, cameras, voice control and using AI to control the movements. Also, since the feet are made of metal, they can slip on a hard floor, so it would be nice with some rubber feet and some visual 3D printed skins to bolt to the frame to cover all the wires and the electronics, but this would be a project for another time. I'm super happy with the results so far, and I really like that the hexapod is so big and heavy and it looks lifelike and a bit scary when it moves. If you would like to see a more advanced version, please leave a comment and I might do videos on how to implement various improvements. If you found the content valuable, please consider subscribing so you get notified when I build more robots.